All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about something that I think it will be at least fairly interesting for some of you guys because I do get a lot of comments and I try to be understanding and, um, you know, like give people options because I think that's the entire point of my channel, at least, is to, you know, get knives in, test them, review them, put them out there for you guys to at least see. And so I get a lot of comments because I do feature a lot of expensive knives, and that is where are the cheap knives? And definitely in this day and age, especially with inflation and just financial things being as wacky as they are. Um, it's hard to, especially if things like bushcrafting and survival are a recreation for you and you're not really going out as an outdoor professional, it's hard to afford really nice, really expensive knives, axes, hatchets, saws, and all of that stuff. And honestly, too, when it comes to outdoors, my, my channel specifically primarily focuses on knives, but there is so much more to it. Obviously, like I have a full-on survival kit with lots of expensive stuff in it. You know, even diving into my personal survival kit, you know, there are expensive of things like survival beacon or personal locator beacons and just expensive stuff right so knives sometimes can be hard to stomach a two three four hundred dollar cost but today we are going to be talking about knives that even a broke person could afford we're talking about every knife that is on this table here is sub twenty dollars so it's about as low as i can find for a knife that is quality that won't just like break on you that's a decent size and so while these wouldn't necessarily be first survival knife picks these are really solid bushcrafting knife and potentially you could even roll them into some survival applications um so yeah these are going to be like i said sub 20 dollar knife picks and a lot of them are going to be mora's no i'm not sponsored by mora but mora just so happens to have a very streamlined manufacturing process where they can produce knives very cheaply very effectively and they work well. So yeah, anyways, let's jump into it without any further ado. Let's talk about the first two knives. So the first one up is going to be the Mora 511. Now the 511 comes in a myriad of different handle colors, um, but these guys are all basically the same. It's a thinner blade stock and it is also a pretty thin like thickness. So this is a pretty nimble crafting knife. This would definitely be more of what I would say focused on, it's getting kind of beginners and people looking to really get into the crafting aspects of bushcrafting. This is not going to be a thick, robust, or wide blade in any way, but it is just very effective, very sharp, and is a nice little slicer. And like I said, because it is a thinner blade stock, this one has the thinner or um, the most narrow blade stock of any of the mentioned or any of the knives we're mentioning today, it is going to be very nimble and very small. So once again, if you're also looking for something for say a beginner or a you know younger person, this would not be necessarily a bad choice. Um, in addition to that too, like I said, it's carbon steel. It's made out of C100, which is the Swedish um, kind of variant of 1095 high carbon. So you will have to look after it, make sure that's oiled, that it doesn't rust, or you can go ahead and force patina it uh, is another option. Now, in a lot of times, I think with actually all of these knives, except for maybe one of them, you will have to, if you want to be able to strike ferro rods off the spine, you will need to take something like a Dremel and flatten that spine out. It's really not that difficult to do, but you will probably have to do that if you want the ability to strike off the back of the spine. Now the next one up, as I showed, is the Mora Clipper. Now the Mora Clipper or Companion, they are very similar knives, and because they are so similar, and because Mora reintroduced the Clipper line, uh, I do usually recommend the Clipper just because it has a very large area of rubberized texturing, whereas the Companion has a similar area, but I like the diamond textured pattern on this guy a little bit better than the Companion. So I tend to like this one a little bit more. Um, um, but another solid offering would also be the Companion Heavy Duty if you are looking for a little bit thicker, eighth of an inch thick blade. Either way though, these guys are pretty good. You can find them in stainless steel offerings. This one is in carbon steel and it is you know, C100 as the last. So pretty solid offering um, overall. And I think that the Companion or Clipper is probably one of the top offerings for me. I would say it is a really worthy contender. Now, the last one up, I promise the last Mora on the list is going to be the Mora Robust. Now, this one takes the similar size of the 511. So you have that, you know, three in a I think three and a quarter, three and a half inch blade. So pretty small um, or pretty short, you know, blade, but it is that eighth of an inch thick. So it's pretty, pretty robust as the name implies. This is the more robust, um, but it is pretty stout and uh, 
as a nice benefit to this being the thicker blade stock. It is also wider with a wider grind. Now, this is a very well-made knife and I really have no complaints about it. This is probably about as good as it gets for sub $20 if you're looking for the best well-rounded, just all around do everything kind of knife. All right, next one up is going to be BPS's copy of the Mora Clipper. So this is the Mora Clipper. This is the BPS copy of it. And BPS knives are very interesting. These guys are, I don't know, they're definitely interesting knives because they offer something that the Moras don't, and that is a true exposed full tang, and you get nice wood handles. But because they are keeping the price, once again, sub $20, they um, use 1066 high carbon. So what that means is um, all the other knives you see here are 1095 high carbon. It just means that there is less carbon overall in this steel um, alloy. So you are going to have less edge retention, so you will have to sharpen these more frequently so once again you are kind of trading extra durability you know a full um, you know exposed full tang um, for that less edge retention so it kind of depends what you need this knife you know in absolute terms will be more durable than the Mora's but realistically speaking this it's arguable because you know I mean it's not bad to have the extra you know rigidity and um, durability but realistically the Moras are very capable however like I said if you really do want that exposed full tank if that's something that's valuable to you this knife is a pretty pretty solid pick now the cool thing is this knife is its spine is fairly sharp it could probably stand to be sharpened a little bit more out of box it's pretty good though and so yeah these guys are pretty hard to beat um, this one actually might have the most narrow blade length or blade width of them all now I look at it but yeah very similar to the Mora Clipper companion um, in its overall kind of just shape but it is like I said full tang it's definitely heavier definitely beefier this one is uh, around that eighth of an inch thick so you guys can see there in comparison to the um, clipper it is substantially thicker or noticeably thicker at least all right, rounding it out with the last one is Holtefers. Now, this is the Holtefers um, heavy duty knife. It's not actually my favorite, as I've talked about this knife versus the more, more robust. I do not love how the edge comes from factory. It's fairly dull, and uh, they put a pretty substantial micro bevel on that edge. I'm also not a huge fan of this area towards the tip. Not my favorite, but Holtefers does make um, multiple knives. Uh, the heavy duty is under $20 and their standard um, utility knife, which is similar to, I, I would say closer to like maybe the 511 ultimately, um, where it's the thinner stock, but it still has, you know, like this type of handle. I would say these knives are, you know, very, very similar to the Moras. So if you're looking for something that's not specifically a Mora, that has a little bit of extra handle length because that's the most noticeable difference. They'll have a little bit of extra handle length, tons of sprawling space there. Um, the Holdifers is worthwhile checking out. Now, once again, when it comes to the blade on the Holdifers, you will probably have to, you know, regrind it or sharpen it up for sure, at least sharpen it because these guys are not very sharp out of box, but you will have to, um, you know, give it some TLC. But once again, if you're looking for sub $20 knives, you may have to put in some extra work to modify them to make them, you know, as good as, you know, your more expensive knives. Now, you know, like, it's kind of unfortunate because stepping up even just to like sixty dollars, you can get something like a Garberg, like this carbon one. You have a sharpened spine; everything is good to go out of box. So you know you don't have to step up tons of money. But like I said, if where you're at financially is you can only spend fifteen to twenty bucks on a bushcrafting knife, um, these are very solid options. They're all pretty reputable companies. Mora's very reputable. Holtefers is pretty good. They are mainly known for making their axes. Um, um, but you know, they're pretty solid and BPS is definitely a newer one, but these guys do make, you know, good solid knives and they aren't lying about anything. I do. That is probably the thing I like about them most. It's probably hard to read the text on here because this is mirror polished and this is, you know, um, very small print, but it does say on here, you know, 1066, I guess not 1065, but 1066 high carbon um, made in Ukraine. So they're not hiding anything. They're not trying to say like high carbon because that's probably my least favorite thing about the Holtefers and Moras is they just have 
oil. This one actually just says carbon steel on it. And the other ones just say carbon. So, you know, like they don't really tell you what exact materials are in their knives. So I do like that at least BPS, like they don't have the highest quality materials, but they also don't hide anything. They're full transparency in what they're using and where they come from. So um, that is it's something that I do appreciate. Like at least they're being honest about it and they're not trying to hide it or be dodgy and be like high carbon or carbon steel. It's, it's 1066 and so it is what it is. Um, especially for this price point, you can't really ask for too much more. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.